Okay, checking back in here at the start of turn five, as you can see. And unfortunately, it's been a rather harsh few turns for the whites. As you can see down here in the south, at the end of turn three, we the whites had positioned themselves to put Tsaritsyn out of supply. Actually, the Latvian rifles weren't there. Uh, that's been reinforced over strategic turn B. It was just a reduced army, and we had supply cut off with the partisans moving up there and the Cossacks had kind of wound around and attacked on the Volga. Uh, unfortunately, a counterattack, or actually on, on turn four, the Reds seized initiative with a die roll. They chose this front first because Zaritsyn was out of supply, and they made a pretty risky counterattack. It could have gone very badly for the forces here had they lost, but instead they rolled higher in the die, and they did very well, knocking back this white stack here and reducing everybody, forcing the Cossacks to retreat, forcing the partisans to move back. It was a huge move, a huge gamble, and it paid off huge dividends. That definitely boded well for the attack up here on the Eastern Front, in which, again, the Red Army using their numbers. This is where I've uh, this is where the Red player, I guess that's me, but the Red player has dedicated most of their army resources towards attacking this front because I really wanted to knock out uh, the Siberians if I could. And I've come very close. Uh, the Red Army was able to basically use that gap on Nizhny Novgorod and surround a stack of white units just outside of Simbirsk. And because they were able to close off uh, their retreat routes with zones of control, it was completely devastating for the white stack there. I think everybody was eliminated. Um, the troops in Simbirsk made a desperate attack on the First Army here to reopen their live supply because the First Army actually was um, up here and was closing off supply, so... That was a desperate attack. They were able to. They lost a unit, but they reopened supply, which kept them from going um, belly up on logistics. And it also allowed me to take one unit out of there on the strategic move uh, this turn. So I was able to at least salvage some forces. Now the big thing about going past strategic turn B, now that we're on turn five, is that the rest of the map kind of opens up over here. So you begin to see that this territory now has units in it. We've got nationalist units, we've got the Polish uh, armies in there, so uh, we can now start drawing chits uh, for the Polish army and for the northwest units up here, because this opens up. There are some special rules. Um, I won't go into all of them right now. The big one that I think is important is the Polish army. Essentially, if you draw the Polish chit uh, when it comes up for an activation, and there's not at least four manpower points of the Red Army within five spaces of Poland, it enters the war. Uh, also, if there's major allied withdrawal and the Polish shit gets drawn, they enter the war. That's really crucial because the Red Army is receiving tons of reinforcements over strategic turn B. They're able to get uh, four armies back on the field. So having one army tied up here in Smolensk uh, is really helping out in other ways. But how long that army stays tied up and, and how successful I am in pushing this sort of open area around Ekaterinoslav um, in uh, Odessa and Sevastopol there. How quickly and how successfully I can move my troops up on this front will largely dictate um, the pace of the game here and capturing resources. Because unfortunately, having my eastern front just totally collapse, I'm going to have to pull out of uh, some beers there and I'll probably lose Izhvesk. Um, that's going to hurt me here as the white player. As you can see, I only have three resources. And if we look at the turn track, strategic turn C is coming up. And i got to have three resources to keep them... Uh, to keep the Allies from running away. So, a lot of pressure basically down here. I'm going to have to definitely be pushing aggressively. And one thing that's going to help me out here is that the Reds, if you're the Red player, you get a field staff chit, and you get to select two fronts for every um, turn. If you roll a Red leader, you can get more chits because the leaders show up at different fronts, and uh, they give you the ability to freely activate that front. So... You know, until the Reds can get more leaders on the board, they have to make difficult choices because here's the Southwest Front. And if I push up here, you know, currently there's two armies up here, but they also still have to deal with the AFSR forces, which, you know, battered are still around. And they've got to worry about cleaning up this uh, Siberian problem because I was able to get significant reinforcements um, for the Siberian Front on strategic term B. But, you know, to clear them out, you're going to have to extend your supply lines. I'm going to have to dedicate more armies. It's far from over, even though this front has been severely weakened, it's far from over for the Whites. 
And uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure also to defend Petrograd over here because now we have the Northwest Army. Uh, so lots of different points I can actually apply to make life a little more difficult for the Reds. But the Reds definitely have sort of an advantage, I think, right now. And the next few turns is really going to be telling as far as who grabs initiative and who can do what with their with their forces. Because we need to be really careful with the, the whites down here, very brittle on their flip side. So I need to, to really be careful on planning attacks there and, and making aggressive moves. But at the same time, I have to threaten Rostov. I have to keep this army tied down here because that's what's going to give me more freedom of action with the, my units in Sevastopol. Zoom in on them to give them the ability to come up here and to, and to really create some havoc in the area here. Okay, so like I said, beginning of turn five, I'm uh, currently writing the reports for this uh, for the previous turn, so look forward to those, and I will check back with you later.